Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. From this particular session, we'll start with the JavaScript tutorial. We'll see from the basic level to the advanced level. So then we'll look on to the Node.js, Express, React, and MongoDB. So let's start with this particular session from the introduction part. And the most interesting point is I'll be providing you the free notes whichever I have written from my side. So this particular link you will be find inside the description below. So now let's start with the introduction part. So before starting the introduction, let's play the intro. So I'll be giving you the brief introduction about the website like how the website will be working. So basically if you open any of the website so what all the things we'll be seeing we'll be seeing only the hypertext markup language which has been encoded into a human readable language and we'll be seeing a website suppose if i if i want to open the get bootstrap.com so you can see the website we are seeing so that is nothing but just a bootstrap website so you can see the designing and the navbar over here and all the titles everything but if i just press ctrl u you can see the source code of it that is nothing but HTML code as well as a CSS code as well as a JavaScript code has been encoded over here So it is encoded and it is coming in the form of a human readable language So now we'll see the what all the thing is related with the website So basically to create any website we need to have two things that is a front-end part as well as a back-end part So for creating a dynamic website So there are two types of websites static website as well as a dynamic websites So the static website understand like there is no database connections and there is no back-end language for the dynamic website, we need to have the backend language as well as a database will be connected for the backend purpose. To create a front end, we need to know about these all the technologies that is HTML, CSS, as well as JavaScript. And the latest one, the particular frameworks of JavaScript are React, Angular, and Pug. So Pug is just a HTML template. So where we can start uh, creating by using the particular syntax, we can just uh, write the front end part. So now, once the front end is completed, so we need to have any backend language to know. Suppose if you if you are familiar with the JavaScript, then you can use a backend language as Node.js, Node.js as well as Express. If you are a Python developer, you can go ahead with the Flask as well as you can go ahead with the PHP, uh, sorry the Django. So then, if you want to write a you want to write a backend using a PHP, you can go with the PHP as well as Rallyver. So basically, the backend is what the things which is handled. Suppose if I want to click, I just try to click onto the icons. So you can see I'll be getting the page is getting routed to the icons and uh, the content is coming from the database. These all things will handle by our backend part and the data which you are filling the form. Suppose if I have a forms inside the bootstrap, if I just uh, click on to the if I just come below. So I think I don't have any form. So the particular forms, the website which has the particular forms and the data is coming from the database. So everything will be coming from where it is coming from the database. So for the front end part. So the basic uh, requirement is HTML. So HTML is basic requirement for all the HTML. The HTML is nothing but a hypertext markup language. So which is used to create a structure of the website. So CSS is used to put the colors for the website. Like you can see, I have a come. I have a just a purple color over here. And along with that, you can see the font size of it and the how the image is coming over here. How the button has been defined like this. So once the uh, cursor is hovered on the download you can see the background color is getting changed so how is all this working it so it all works from the css that is nothing but cascading style sheets okay so then html is a gesture structure css is used to for the designing purpose for giving the padding margin background images or font colors font size and a number of things i will pro apply the css property for all these things all right now coming back to the javascript so why javascript is most popular so because the javascript is a client side scripting as well as you can you will you can just avoid the load on the servers so it is just a javascript you can see the javascript runs where the javascript runs in the console if i right click and inspect you can see i'll be having a console over here so i can just run the javascript here also so why javascript is most popular because i can handle i can just make my website more uh, dynamic more scalability and 
just without giving a load onto the server i can just every i can just run all the things inside my console itself okay so because of that the javascript is more the uh, most has most it has been used and it has latest version is es6 where we can which it has a number of features we can apply those all the properties and i can look onto it suppose i'll just open the handwritten notes which i have uh, added in the description so let's see what all the things is the in the javascript so you can see i have said you javascript is basically a programming language which allows the client side scripting to interact with the users and make the pages dynamically by using this javascript i can change the both html part as well as a css part so the, what is the difference between the client side and the server side so client side describes where the application road uh, code is uh, running at the end user side suppose suppose you take example of a flip card when you try to click on to the add to cart button the but that particular data is not getting saved in your in the particular servers actually the data will be get saved in your particular cache memory it will be stored in the cache memory itself you can see we have a storages the session storages and the local storages will see will, will be seeing all these things in the coming uh, sessions the data will get stored over here it, it doesn't store in the database so once you do the payment once you do the payment once you click the final submit in the flipkart while purchasing that data will get stored into where in your in the particular flipkart servers so until that all the manage all the things will happen in the client side itself that is inside your local storages and session storages at that place so this is why so at that time what is the most advantage here is we are not giving pressure for the servers and our servers are safe only only one time request we are sending for the server so for each and every button we are not uh, sending the request for the server so that is why it is most important so now so what is the uh, this is about the client the server side is nothing but once all the things once you have purchased all the products once you are clicking a final submit the particular request goes to the server and the data will get stored so that will be coming for the server server side where our logic will be running it so now coming back to the installation part so what all the re requirement for the installation for the javascript there is no special law there is no special installation like we can just we will be running the javascript inside our console itself that is inside our chrome browser so now to write a code to write a code we need to have an editor to have editor i'll be using a vs code editor so just go on to the google chrome and enter vs code download so you can see the first part the download the visual studio code for mac linux and windows so i'll just click on to this first link so you can see just uh, try whichever uh, the system you have start downloading for it so i'll be downloading for windows 7 8 9 so once I start downloading it, the VS code will get start downloaded. So I have already downloaded, so I'll just cancel it. So I have already downloaded and installed. So the installation is very simple. It is a very simple process. Just click next, next, next and install it. So once the VS code has been installed, so then we can start writing our JavaScript. So let's see how all the things can be done by using JavaScript. So now I'll just close all these uh, tabs. So this is about the website overview where we have front end, back end and a database and domain and hosting i'll be telling in the coming classes so what all these related so we have with the front end is nothing but what we are seeing it the back end is a database connected to the particular language which you are using for a back end either flash express or django or php and the database is connected so once the back end is used we'll be using any of the database according to our requirements and much more so then i'll just uh, close this site too so now let's see the installation part we have seen uh, we need to install vs code ide so let's begin with the coding part now so now just create a folder inside your pc so i'll just come back to the pc i'll just go to the e drive so i have created a folder that is a youtube so i have created a folder here in the youtube so what i'll do i'll just create a one more folder so i'll just make it as js so i'll just make it as a js over here the folder name i'll just make it as a js then i'll open this particular folder inside my visual studio code i can right click and i can open with code i'll be getting an option of open with code if you just right click and open with code the vs code will get opened so this is a one way of opening a particular folder so if you want if you don't want to open in this particular fashion i can just uh, close the vs code and i'll just open the vs code in this particular fashion so even i can open the particular folder like this also if i just right click open the folder and i can just select which folder i want to open i can just select the folder and you can see the js folder will get open inside this vs code terminal so once it has been open i'll be saying you the few uh, so the first thing you need to install over here is the live server so i'll just tell live server over here 
So once I search for the live server, you can see here live server is been there. So I have already installed it. In your case, it will be the button of install. Just click on to that particular install button. So once it is done, just tell HTML snippets. So once I use as a HTML snippet, you can see I'll be getting this one. Just try to install that one. So I have already installed. So it will it is not giving me uh, the particular again the install button over here. So once the extension is getting installed, just close all these things, open the folder. So now I'll just create one new folder over here. So I won't create a new folder. I'll just create a new file over here. So I'll just name it as index.html file. So I'll just name it as index.html file. So I'll just press shift and I'll just press the, this particular key that is exclamatory. I'll be getting a boiler template. So it is a telling that a document type is HTML and the language is English and the title is the this particular document. And this is the title name as a document and the meta characters is nothing but it is just saying either it is encoded into the UTF format and it has initialized the scale. So inside your header part, you can add your titles as well as the CSS links inside your body. What you will do things you will be adding it will be visible in the website. Suppose I want to add it as a center tag over here. So now I'll just name it as a H1 tag. I'll just tell welcome to my JS tutorial. So I'll just mention as a welcome to my JS tutorial. So once I click onto the go live button over here, so you can see this particular this particular code will open inside this particular folder. You can see I'm getting a welcome to my JS tutorial. So now let's see how to run the JavaScript here. So if I right click and if I try to inspect, so you can see I'll be getting a console that is where I can run the JavaScript here. So if I can, if I refresh the favicon icon will get cleared. So now if I want to print anything, I need to just tell console dot log. So if I want to print my name over here, so I can just print the particular name and you can see the particular name is getting printed. So the console is working fine. So now if I want to try to I want to print from the particular code by using a script tags. So here I need to write a script tag here. So I'll just tell SC or IPT script script tag. So inside the script, if I want to write anything, if I just tell console, C O N S O L E console. So before writing this one, I need to enable this Django template. It has been taken automatic. So I'll just select it as a HTML here. So I'll just tell console dot log. So I'll just tell welcome to JS first. So I'll just tell this particular line of code and I'll just give it as a semicolon. So if I just press control S, you can see automatically I'm getting over here like a welcome to the JS one. So I can run the particular console from here itself. So first you want to write console console dot if I just tell console dot uh, table. So if I want to write console dot table, so I'll just open. So I'll just mention here the name and I'll just write the designation as uh, developer. So if I just save this particular table, so you can see here the thing is coming in the form of a table and it is a form of an object. So this is how I can write the script from the using this script tag. So this is the one way of writing a particular code. If I just I will just comment this particular line. If I just press if I just select this particular whole script and if I just press control slash the code will get commented. So now I want to load one JS file. So I'll just create one JavaScript file here. So I'll just name it as JS1 dot js dot js is a javascript extension so here i can just write the code now so if i just tell console dot log if i just tell console dot log if i just tell uh, a r k as here and if i just press save so you can see i am not getting a a r k over here why because I, ha I have not loaded this js file inside my html page to load this particular javascript file i need, I need to just give script uh, colon src so here in the src, I need to specify the path of the JS file. So I'll just tell dot slash one in the same folder. I have a JS one dot JS file. Let's just load this file. So once I just press Control S, you can see here I am getting a ARK as here as an output because this particular code is getting running over here. So if I try to add two numbers now, suppose if I try to add two numbers, console dot log. If I try to add two number twelve plus something like uh, eleven. If I just save it, you can see I'm getting as a 23. So I can do any of the operations over here. So if I can just give it as a multiplication, I can do. So I can just make it as a multiplication. Then if I want to minus, I can do anything over here. So giving the semicolon is the best practices. Okay. So if I just save it here, you can see I'm getting all the output inside my console. Then same thing. If you want to have one more, so I just I want to just sell console, console dot. Suppose I want to add, uh, suppose I want to use this particular function that if I want to show the error. So if I just tell console.error over here, so I will just tell error occurred. So if I just save this one, so you can see here 
the error occurred i am getting as the in my console suppose i want to show the warning messages so i can just tell console dot so here i need to just tell console dot one so here i can just choose warning is occurred something like that so warning occurred if i just say this one you can see it will be in the yellow color fashion so this is how i can add the particular things inside my html so then we'll see to i'll just add one of the things so if i want to add the array element so i can just tell console so if i just tell console dot log so if i want to add the array so i'll be using a square bracket so i'll just tell 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 5 if i just save this particular thing you can see i am getting in the all the objects in the form of a array like 1 2 3 all the elements in the form of a array and i'm getting a prototype of this particular array also so this is how i can add the array so if i want to add that table here so i'll just tell console dot uh, table so all the things i want in the form of a table so here i'll just tell so i want i want to display my name over here and i want to display the designation as a developer so then I want to display the something like if I give the age attribute if I just tell 22 and if I just tell anything anything like uh, I will just tell to object itself. So if I just save this one I will just put a semicolon and if I save you can see all the things will be coming in the form of a table format over here. So this is how I can add the table things here. So then so anything else is if I want to clear the particular console here. So if I want to try to clear it console console dot law so sorry console dot clear function i need to use a clear function if i just use this particular clear function all the console will get clear clear over here so this is how i can uh, run all the console law uh, elements console dot one log tables and all the elements i can try to add all these things so this is how i want to see so i want to check where how much time the particular program took to execute the code so i'll just tell console dot time function so if i just use the time function over here so here i need to define the timer so i'll just tell my timer so I given as a console.myTemple over here. So now I want to check from how much time took from here to here. So if I just try to, so I'll just talk right here, like console, sorry. Console dot time end. I need to use a time end function over here. So I need to give the same name, whichever you have used here. So I'll need to just copy this one. I need to just uh, put it into a double quotes over here. So once I save this one, you can see here i am getting like timer uh, my timer doesn't exit why because i have cleared the console so to run this particular code so i should not clear the console so if i just comment out this one to comment the particular javascript code i need to use a single line comment this if i just press control and slash it is it will be the single line comment it will just ignore it so our javascript uh, console will ignore you can see all the output i am getting it but it, it is saying me the my timer it took as 2.65 seconds so this many milliseconds to run to execute all this so this is about this particular function so now we'll see one more function like we have a assert function so if i just tell console we just tell console dot uh, log so if i want to use the assert function so what i'll just do yeah, so sorry i need to use the assert function so assert function i'll be using it so i want to check whether 2l is less than 1 so if it not the particular particular condition is what it is false so when the condition is false i'll just put a comma i'll just tell false condition if i just tell something like false so you can see I'll be getting assertion field that is a false. When the condition is true, what it will return? If I tell tell two l is greater than one, and if I just tell the condition is true, if I just tell as a true over here, if I just save this one, you can see I'm not getting anything. When the condition is true, I, I the particular terminal will return simply, uh, else I'll be getting the assertion error. So we call it as a assertion that particular concept. So this is all about the particular uh, concepts of the console. So how to print the particular statements. So now coming the coming back to the next concept like uh, like i'll just tell you the this is about the single line comments also i have said you so we have the multi-line comments also so we have the multi-line comments so how to add the multi-line uh, comments you know so just we need to specify the particular uh, course like this i can just specify like this to add a multi-line comment i need to just give a slash and i need to just tell a star over here and i can just put a star over here again and i need to close it so this we call it as a multi-line comments okay so this is a multi-line comment so this is a single line comments over like that so this is how i can uh, just add it so once i remove these two things i can just uh, remove all the stuff inside the thing so i'll just uh, remove this multi-line comments over here so that's all for this particular video then coming concept that will in the next video we'll see about what is the data types what are the primitive data types and the reference data types we'll see with the example so i will see you in my next video